Um, the postgrad with Fulso University and MIT ACT academic program entailed doing a lot of research, understanding the part of the cerebrum, creating models, methodologies, what the AON network is, what the limbic system is, what the central nervous system is, what the peripheral nervous system is, what is cultural psychology, behavioral psychology, what are what is stimulus, how it impacts our brain, how it is stimulate our, our brain, empty cells, glia, perspective, motion, spatial perspective, how are we able able to develop our arithmetic skills and artistic skills, central of the distribution, frequency of the distribution, normal of the distribution, all those different factors from mathematics, statistics, to science are what compose the beauty of neuroscience, the ability to develop cognitive models, theories, and methodologies. The AON network, how we relate to other people intelligence, how subconsciously we are increasing or lowering IQ depending on the people that we relate to or correlate with. You can never go wrong with academia, doing research, creating new models, creating new policies. You can never go wrong with academia because you're always enhancing your brain. You're increasing your IQ matter, your gray matter, and your Y matter. And there are statistical studies, T-distribution studies, that show how it increases and it is effective for the Brotman area. The Broca area, the Wernick area, the temporal lobe, the frontal lobe, prefrontal cortex, anterior cingulate cortex, amygdala, emotions. As neuroscience is a huge, is a is a very huge field, and the beauty of this is that you're able to mix it with understanding people's behavior. In quantum physics, right now, there's a study that explains how people react to each other. For example, we're determined by our waves, patterns, our inner frequencies. Our inner frequencies are 12 or 20 hertz. Each frequency has a different hertz. How to increase your memory? How to increase your IQ? It's very simple. Do research, do memorization, continue to challenge your brain, develop that explicit and implicit memory, semantic memory, procedure memory, long-term memory. Don't Google. Remember, Google is not going to make you smarter. Google is actually going to make you the opposite. Try to read books on neuroscience, synopsis, the connection, understand the formation of the brain. God is so wonderful that he created the brain the third week, the hind brain and the fourth brain, and then each function of each hemisphere. Each function of the hemisphere has a different skills, a different cognitive skills, analytical, arithmetic, as well as artistic skills, but they can be combined. My way the brain thinks, I'm able to do statistics, understand what central the distribution is, what is the medium mode, frequency, what are regressions. That all helps you to develop your analytical side of the brain. And your visual part of the brain is developed by doing research, by doing artistic skills, because that's going to allow you to have a, a photographic memory. Developing research and models to help other people make decisions is great. Um, I was able to do this project with MIT ACT program. It was fascinating, developing models to activate the brain, the pathway, the cells, the, M, the glia cells. Um, right now, I'll be doing another postgrad, another research. It, it entails with neuroscience, developing models, what is cultural behavior, what is cognitive psychology, the birth of cognitive neuroscience. It was, it's an actually an interesting start. The birth of cognitive neuroscience starts with a neurosurgeon who actually removed part of the, of the cerebrum of a rat, and he showed there was a cognitive analysis that showed the, la, the, the rat was actually reducing in behavior and in, and, and, and in all senses. That's a very simple cognitive experiment, I think. Um, but it's interesting how the concept cognitive neuroscience was born. I'll be posting more research, more understanding um, what quantum physics is, how quantum physics connects to neuroscience, the understanding of ways and patterns and how we relate to behavior and how we connect with people with the same IQ. Um, that is 100% accurate. It's, it's a theory and a methodology that has been proven through a lot of research and models and is very accurate. Neuroscience is a fascinating field. I love it. Uh, I, I learn so much every day from psychology, from the central nervous system, from long-term potentiation, from the AO network, from special perspective, motion, from glial cells. What are the empty cells? What are the functions of the peripheral nervous system? It's, it's an extremely fascinating field. You're always absorbing new information, stimulus, what is glial cells, what are, what, what are 
the neurotransmitter, how many types of neurotransmitters we have, the glutamate, the dopamine, how dopamine actually affects your memory also and your behavior is, is fascinating, is a beauty to be able to understand what neuroscience is and correlate it with quantum physics and statistics. Um, AO network, the AO network is the part of the brain that activates when you relate to a highly intelligent person. You're also thinking the way the other person is and that's where your associate areas are connected and they link all the different parts of the lobes. Each lobe has a different function. The anterior cingulate cortex has a different function. The amygdala has a different function. The hypothalamus, they all have a different function but they all relate to each other. They relate by different lobes and different pathways and different chemicals and neurotransmitters, the formation of the dendrites, the axons, what is the myelin shed, how many neurons do we have? We, we have 200 billion neurons when, we, when we're born, but due to um, external factors or alcohol or cigar, we're losing and killing those cells and neurons. So for those people that smoke or drink, you're not getting smarter anything you're not getting smarter you're actually killing your cells and dendrites and that's going to affect your semantic memory or your procedure memory your long term memory as, as that's a very simple rule and a hypothesis I, that i cannot even express more because it's, it's, it's you lose cells you lose dendrites and axons and your myelin shed is weakened um I feel very blessed to be able to have a photographic memory. I'm able to view concept, page number, the research that I do. For example, I was writing a research today on statistics that explains the central of the distribution, what is normal of the distribution, what is frequency of the distribution, what are the variants, what are the mean, mode, and frequency. It's, it's, it's interesting to be able to correlate the analytical part with the science, with the anatomy of the brain. Nidia.